the first step in this problem is identifying what the equation is. Because we know if we want to find the y-intercept, we either need to graph this, but we have to have, a poly we have, to have an equation to graph it, or we just plug 0 in for x to find the y-intercept. But again, we have to have the polynomial equation. So do we have enough information to find the polynomial equation? Well, they give us the roots. They say it has to be a degree of 3. Um, so that should spark our interest. We only have two roots here. If I was to multiply those two roots and write them as factors, that would only give me a degree of 2. So yeah, because you, you have to have that conjugate, right? Remember, guys, irrational as well as complex have the conjugate. So if x minus 2 times square root of 3 is a root, that means x equals 4 plus 2 square root of 3 is also a root. right? So just remember that. So therefore, we have um, three roots. And we want to be able to figure out what this polynomial is. And also, they give us one more restriction. OK? OK. They give us one more restriction, that this um, line also has to go through negative 1, negative 52. OK? So that's kind of an interesting um, take here. And we'll talk about where, um, how that can be applied. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and let's work on getting through the problem. So first of all, if we have our roots, that means we can write them as factors. So let's call this f of x. And if we have these are our roots, then hopefully you guys are OK with me writing these as my factors. Yes? Kind of going quickly. We did some things. We're not throwing stuff at other people, but we just wrote your zeros as factors, if you guys remember. Um, now from here, I'm going to do my shortcut. I'm going to group the first two terms. And therefore, this is going to give us 3 times 4, which would be a 12. 2 times 2 squared root of 3 times 2 squared root of 3 is going to be 4 times 3, which is 12. And that's a minus. That's x minus 4 squared, which I can again simplify to x minus 1 times x squared. Um, uh, let's see. Was it going to be minus 8x plus 16 minus 12? Yes. All right. But again, we still need to multiply this all out. So I'm not done yet. Let's go ahead and use box method here. Some of you might have wanted to do this from the start, and that's fine. You could have done that. Let's do x minus 1, and then we'll do x squared minus 8x plus 4. So this gives me x cubed, negative 8x squared plus 4x, negative x squared plus 8x minus 4. All right. So as you guys can see, if I was to plug 0 in for x right now, I would not get, I'd get a y-intercept of negative 4, which is not an answer choice, right? So that's why that restriction, that's why this restriction of, um, that's why this restriction here is, for that point, can make a um, difference. Yes? Well, we, where, where's k? Like, is there like a constant? Like, how do you know that's just an equation? I'm sorry? How do you, the equation that you started with, how do you know that, like, there's not something added on to it, like, the equation? Well, that is the equation of the zeros, right? So, yeah, what we got to do is we got to think about, like, so these are the zeros. The zeros make up this, right? Now, what is the one thing, though, that we can do? to this polynomial that would impact the graph, but actually would not impact the zeros. Yeah, see, see my thing is, all right, so here it is in factored form, right? Would it matter if there was a k there? Would that change the zeros? No, because think about what's k doing. k is on the outside, right? So k is vertically stretching or compressing the graph. That's not changing the zeros. You guys agree with me? 
So therefore, let's pretend there is this number k. We don't know what k is. So k is there, k is there. And then you know, we could have k on the outside. So we have this k here. So k is this constant that we just don't know. It's expanding and stretching the graph, right? But we've got to multiply it through. But we don't need to multiply it through because we have now a point, or we have enough information to figure out what k is. And basically what that means is we can say, this is going to be a negative 52 is equal to k times negative 1 cubed minus 9 times negative 1 squared plus 12 times negative 1 minus 4. And when we do our math here, it's what? This equals 2? No, it's this equals negative 26. I'm going to assume your math is correct. And if anybody can verify, second? Yeah? OK. So k is equal to 2. So really, there's a 2 outside of there. And if you were to distribute that 2, then you'd be left with a negative 8. And is that an answer choice? Yes. Yeah. So now our polynomial with k is equal to 2, we really have 2x cubed minus 18x squared plus 24x minus 8. And that is your y-intercept. Kind of a complicated problem, for sure, right? But it's a good review. It covers a lot of things. It covers the x. It covers how to find the y-intercept. 